Anomi Kai is a gathering of people with like minds getting together in a casual setting, usually with considerable alcoholic beverages, to share ideas, perspectives, and opinions. For the February meeting, I was asked to give a brief presentation on 3D printing and why I'm so passionate about it. The title I picked, Using 3D Printing to Improve Your Life, Practical Applications of Personal 3D Printing, encapsulates my approach to the topic. As a six foot seven American living in a country where I'm in the extreme minority from the perspective of culture, language, and size, I know from personal experience that one size never fits all. It's a truism that applies to more than just buying clothes. Mass-produced consumer items like smartphones, television, cars, and even the food we eat are targeted at the average consumer. They fit most of the people well enough, but never quite fit any individual completely. We've become accustomed to making do with 80 or 90 or even 95% satisfaction to the point that we really don't expect to be extremely pleased and delighted by new products. This really hit me when a friend on Facebook posted recently about an iPad stand that he wanted to buy. There were several problems. First, the manufacturer was in the U.S. and didn't ship outside the country. Second, the stand only worked with the latest iPad configurations. I was using a first-generation iPad in one of the stock iPad covers, and I didn't want to remove the cover just to put the device on its stand. I knew what I wanted, but there wasn't any manufacturer marketing a product that would satisfy my needs. So I decided to make it. Of course, I took my inspiration from the internet photos of the iPad stand that my friend had mentioned on Facebook. The first step was to capture some real-world data. I could have taken a lot of measurements and done some analysis, but instead I went back to my kindergarten drawing classes where you put your hand on a piece of paper and then trace around it with a pencil. Using paper with a grid, I drew a desktop on the paper. Then I positioned my actual iPad in its cover at the angle that I thought would work best. I added the outline of an Apple wireless keyboard since I often use the two of them together. Once I had them roughly positioned where I wanted them, I sketched in the outline of the stand I wanted to create. Using the ShotNote iOS application, I was able to take a photo of the sketch and automatically correct for any distortions in the image. That allowed me to bring it into my CAD program and to scale it to the right dimensions. It was easy then to quickly create some points on the photo and connect the points with curves to create the 2D outline of the stand. For this particular part, making it 3D was as simple as extruding the part outline upwards along the Z dimension. I could then output the STL mesh that I needed to print the part. I used Kiss Slicer to convert the STL mesh into the G-code needed by the printer. Like all designs, it was a process of trial and error. The part dimensions were right the first time, but after playing with the printed part a little, I decided to open up some of the dimensions a little so that the keyboard would just snap into the stand rather than having it slide along the edge. So in fairly short order, I had a product that was exactly what I wanted. And since I did the design and created the files myself, I can easily go back and modify it later as my needs change. It's all about fulfilling your own needs because in the end, only you know what really satisfies you. The smallest, yet most important niche market is you. Also, if you don't do it, no one else will. Here's another example. Since all the furniture here in Japan is designed for the average Japanese height, all the tables are too low for me. I've resorted to placing bricks under the table legs to raise them high enough so that I don't bang my knees while sitting on the table. That kind of works okay, but it has its limitations. It looks kind of hokey and during the big earthquake a few years ago, my work table slid off the bricks and dumped a bunch of my robots and test equipment all over the floor. After I started using 3D printing, one of my first designs was to create stable replacements for those bricks. These slip over the ends of the table legs and are very stable because they're designed to exactly fit the tables. And I can print them in any color I need. An unintended consequence of applying 3D printing in this way is that you find that it removes stress from your life. Things that don't quite fit continually irritate us. A great product may satisfy 95% of your needs, but that missing 5% will continue to irritate you at a low level as long as you use the product. The better a product satisfies your needs, the lower your stress will be. A couple of years ago, the Wishbone Kickstarter project featured an innovative earphone cable organizer. 
I'd only seen it online and not in the stores here, and the shipping charges had I bought it from the U.S. would have been outrageous. The product concept is elegantly simple, and it addresses a real need in a very direct, straightforward manner that's instantly grasped by users. Except I couldn't buy one, so I decided to make my own. It took about 30 minutes to put together a CAD design, plus another 30 minutes or so to print my first part. And I used that for about two weeks and was very pleased by it, except for a few minor irritations. The cable would sometimes slip out of the center channel, and the wrapped cable would unravel every once in a while. So I went back to my CAD design file, and I modified the design to trap the cable in the center channel while still allowing it to be easily inserted and removed when necessary. I also added small hooks at the ends of the part to restrain the cable from unraveling. For my own personal use, it improved the quality of my experience considerably. And I know that I can go back and improve the part more later if my needs change. It's more than just being able to design something that you need or want without being at the mercy of high volume manufacturing and mass marketing. You also have the ability to personalize your designs. Personalization has become extremely easy and affordable. You can make things your own. Your style has become essentially free. I wanted a small pitcher with a snout to water plants around the house. None of the pitchers that I saw in the local garden shops really fit the bill. They were either too big or too cute or too ugly for my taste. So my first design attempt was purely functional. It focused on getting the size and angle of the snout and other dimensions right. Looking at it, in terms of adding style, the pitcher kind of resembled an elephant's head, so I added eyes and ears that also made it easier to hold. I've recently gotten involved with aquaponics and have been trying to improve and enhance a small test system at home. One of the objectives is to make the system as ecologically friendly as possible. And that involves decreasing power consumption while enhancing functionality and productivity. The system has a bell siphon that cycles the water level in the grow bed and returns it to the fish tank below. We wanted to take advantage of this to oxygenate the water and create a current that would move debris towards the pump where it would be moved back into the grow bed. The solution was a simple quad outlet that slides onto the PVC pipe used in the downflow from the grow bed. The fixture creates four streams of water and introduces some turbulence that mixes more air into the water. For this size system, we were able to eliminate the need for a separate bubbler and decrease the need for electrical power. The fixture can be easily rotated to direct the water stream wherever you want it. You can see from the bubbles how effective it is at oxygenating the fish tank. After you start working with 3D printing for a while, you start to look at things and look at life from a very different perspective. And once you realize that you can modify things that you previously took for granted to make them even more useful or more pleasurable, it becomes addictive. Who knows where this might lead? You'll also find that other people will want and appreciate what you've done. One of my friends, William Morris, was a graduate student in robotics in New York City. For some of his research, he needed custom parts that he just couldn't find from suppliers. So he bought a MakerBot printer and designed them himself. When he started posting about his parts on his blog, other researchers started to ask if they could buy the parts from him. In a little over a year, that's expanded into a viable business with several employees and a strong growth rate. 3D printing is really empowering. It gives you the power and tools you need to remake your world. Instead of being at the mercy of what corporations want to convince you to buy, you get to decide. So what's next? I do a lot of photography and video work, and I've always wanted to have a camera dolly for tracking shots. But the professional units can be quite expensive, typically way out of my budget. I have some old metal poles from a storage rack that weren't being used, and I've already prototyped a dolly track. The next step is to print the wheels and insert wheel bearings and then make the carriage itself. No presentation like this would be complete without talking about the technical stuff. My 3D printer is a Tantalus designed and manufactured in Canada. I can't speak highly enough about the Tantalus print quality and performance. It continues to surprise and delight me. For solid modeling and CAD, I use ViaCAD 2D, 3D. When I need to analyze or repair STL data, I use NetFab Basic, which is free. The G-code is generated using KISS Slicer, which I have found to be more reliable and more consistent than other slicers. And for the image capture, I use the iOS version of ShotNote. I believe there's also an Android version available. 
Thank you very much for listening. I appreciate your attention. If you have any questions or need more information, feel free to contact me at robotsdreams.com or 3dprintingdreams.com.